So far in our questions with inequality, we've always been given the initial value. So we've always been told that n must be greater or equal to a certain number. Now we're going to work with a question where it doesn't tell us this. So in question three, we want to prove that n squared plus n is less than n cubed minus one by mathematical induction. And you notice a big gap here. It hasn't told you what n must be greater or equal to. And that means for us that we have to test out numbers and find out when the left hand side is less than the right hand side. So we always start off with n equals to zero. So left hand side just equals to zero, whereas the right hand side is negative one. Now zero is greater than one, negative one. So left hand side is greater than. So no, that doesn't satisfy that. Okay, moving on to n equals to one. We have one squared plus one equals to two. The right hand side is one cubed minus one that equals to zero. And once again, the left hand side is greater than the right hand side. So it doesn't work for that. And so we just keep going on to the next number. So two squared plus two equals to six. Two cubed minus one equals to seven. So yes, finally, we see that this is when the left hand side becomes less than the right hand side. So we know we're working with n is greater or equal to two. So the initial value is two, which means now for step one, we go show it is true for n equals to two. So this here is the extra step that we have to take if we're not told what n has to be greater or equal to. Okay, so this is an extra step. All right, let's start with step one now. So show it's true for n equals to two. So using this, which we've already done, kind of, left hand side is six, right hand side equals to seven, left hand side is less than right hand side, therefore the statement is true for n equals to two. For step two, our assumption that it is true for n equals to k, so we assume that is that k squared plus k is less than k cubed minus one. So. We've made the assumption and we move on to step three, where we show it is true for n equals to k plus one. So substituting that into here, that is k plus one squared, yeah, plus that becomes k plus one. This becomes k plus one cubed minus one. So this is the equation we're trying to prove, inequality. So I want you to keep that in mind. We want to prove that this side is less than the other side. All right, let's start off with the left-hand side. So we have k plus one squared plus k plus one. So what we can do here is expand. They'll give us k squared plus two k plus one plus k plus one, which equals to k squared plus three k plus two. Now, I want us to think back to what the assumption was and the assumption was assuming k squared plus k, right? So that's why over here, even though we've worked it out to be k squared plus 3k plus 2, we need to separate it into k squared plus k and then 2k plus 2, yeah? Because I want to use this assumption here. So now I've separated it. Remember how we use this assumption is with a basic assumption in step two, we know that k squared plus k is less than k cubed minus one. Now, if I add two k plus two to this side, I must also add two k plus two to this side as well. Yeah, so always balance in two. So therefore I can say that this is gonna be less than that. Okay, so I've balanced it. I'm gonna use this whole thing in our assumption over here, which is that this must be less than that, considering we know that this is less than that. Yeah, makes sense? Good. So now what I'm gonna be working with is this over here, yeah? So we just have k cubed plus two k minus one plus two, which just gives me plus one. So now I have k cubed plus 2k plus 1. All right, now I want to go back to my equation here 
and remind myself what I'm trying to do, I want to somehow make this look like that. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Which means I want to know what this is. What's k plus 1 cubed? Now k plus 1 cubed is going to be k squared plus 2k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 1, isn't it? When we expand it. So when we expand that, we're going to get k cubed plus k squared plus 2k squared plus k, we've got k cubed plus k squared, 2k squared plus 2k plus k plus 1, and that gives me k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. Now why I've gone to all this effort to work this out is because I need a portion of this for my next step. Now remember in the first question we did how we want to make this greater or less than something and what I want to do is make a greater or less than this over here. So what I'm using is this portion. Yeah? So I've moved this over here. So I've actually worked kind of backwards a little. I've gone back to the original thing and worked that out first, right? So this was that. And now you can see, why can I say this is less than that? Well, that's because k cubed is the same as k cubed. Now, 2k is definitely less than 3k squared, isn't it? Because 2 is less than 3 and k is less than 3, is less than k squared. And we can also say that 1 must also be less than 3k because we know also that k must start from 2. So we can say that this must be less than that, that must be less than that. So therefore, this whole side must be less than that side, correct? Now this, I'm just going to add 1 minus 1. So what we have over here is we're trying to make this into that, right? But this just balances itself out. Plus 1 minus 1 equals 0, so we're not actually changing anything. But I want to add 1, so now I can factorise it into k plus 1 cubed. And that leaves us with minus 1 on the outside. And you can see that looks exactly like the right hand side that we have here. Can you see that? That equals exactly the same as that. So therefore we can say that the left hand side is less than the right hand side. So let's have a look here. Equals equals to less than. Equals to less than. So we have two examples where it's less than. So we can definitely say that left hand side must be less than the right hand side. So therefore, it is true for n equals to k plus 1. So therefore, for n squared plus n less than n cubed minus 1, it is true for n is greater or equal to 2. So the new things that we learnt in this question was to find out the initial value, we just test starting from n equals to 0 until it does satisfy the equation. And just a reminder, just another thing is sometimes you need to go back to the what we have up here into the original question in step three and work from the right hand side as well as the left hand side and use that information together to work the final answer out.